Welcome and good morning. Today's worship service focuses our attention on Elijah and his experience with discouragement and depression. We hear him say to God, take away my life. More than one child of God has come to that point in his or her life, feeling the burden of discouragement, the, the weight of depression, the, the guilt of sin. But Elijah found strength in the relief given by God, who cared for Elijah both physically and spiritually. As God's beloved children, we're afforded that same consistent care from God for all things needful. With those thoughts in mind, we raise our hearts and voices in worship. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father, most merciful God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together in the entrance psalm for the day. You open your hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. 
Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, use his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Grant that Christ, the bread of life, may live in us and we in him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear God's word appointed for this day, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. The Old Testament reading from the 19th chapter of 1 Kings. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid, and he arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And he lay down and slept under a broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is found in the fourth chapter of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Now this I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learned Christ. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him, as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood. Let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and go give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. 
and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were created for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So the Jews grumbled about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us now confess our faith to one another and to the world in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It is time again for our children's message. It's great to see you here this morning. It's still in the summertime. It's almost over. And summertime is a time for vacations, for road trips. I don't know if any of you went on a road trip. I always look forward whenever I was a kid to going on a road trip. Uh, we'd get everything packed up in the car and take off on the road. And we hadn't been gone very long. And my question was, no, not are we there yet, but what can I eat? Well. True to form, mother always had things packed for us. There were apples and bananas and fruit and cookies, always something to snack on. And that was okay, but then after a while, we needed more than just a snack. Like you, I'm sure you would get very hungry and you'd want a regular meal. So that's when we'd pull out the sandwiches and the chips and we'd have our, our lunch. 
My parents did that because they loved me, just like your parents love you and do all kinds of nice things like that for you. They give you the things you need. They want you to grow strong and be big and strong. Well, today in our Bible lesson, our first reading, the Old Testament reading, was from the book of First Kings. We heard about God's prophet Elijah, who was on a long trip. Now, he didn't go on a trip in a car, but he was walking. In fact, sometimes almost running because he was actually running for his life. At one point, he got so tired, so discouraged, so hungry and thirsty that he just didn't feel like he could go on. So he laid down beside underneath a broom tree, and ask God to take his life. Well, instead, God gave Elijah what he needed. First, a snack. He gave him some bread and some water. Elijah laid down and slept a little bit, and then God sent the angel again to wake him up and say, Eat, eat more, eat a big meal. And so Elijah did, and that Gave him the strength he needed to go on. And then God did something else. God told Elijah that he was with him all the time and that he was using him for God's important work. God takes care of you too, just as your mom and dad do, just as God did with Elijah. Our Heavenly Father made all the food we eat, all the snacks, all the meals, everything we have so that we can live. And as God was with Elijah, God is with each one of us. He sent Jesus to come and be with us here on earth, his son. And then he died on the cross so that you and I could live with him forever. God promised us that we will never be alone. He's always going to be with us. He'll always take care of us. So we are never really alone. God is with us. He keeps us safe. And he will someday take us to be with him in heaven. Let's go to him in prayer then, as we fold our hands and bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with us always, for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross to care for us. We know that you are always there for us, always watching over us. And so we give you thanks and praise. In the name of your son Jesus, amen. Now we continue with our worship service. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. It soothes our sorrows, heals our and drives away our fear. It makes the wounded spirit whole and calms the heart's unrest. Tis manna to the hungry soul and to the weary. Yeah. 
Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our meditation today is from our Old Testament reading in 1 Kings chapter 19. Let us pray. O Lord our God, I pray that the words of my lips, that the meditation of our hearts, would be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, as we continue to be strengthened by you daily. Amen. And now in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. The story of Elijah is an interesting one. He was one of the first of the great prophets, a prophet to the nation of northern Israel, to the people who would later become known as the Ten Lost Tribes. Like us, Elijah is on a journey, a journey of the Spirit, a journey that has led him to a confrontation with the priest of Baal, the God of Jezebel, the wife of King Ahab. On that journey, Elijah has earned the hatred of Jezebel, which, of course, given her charming personality, was a very easy thing to earn, and she wishes him dead. So he flees from the city of Jezreel to Beersheba, and then he goes out into the wilderness about a day's walk and came to a solitary broom tree in the midst of this wilderness and sits under the tree, and asks God that he might die. There are times, are there not, when people we know and love despair to the point of wanting to die. Perhaps there have been times when we ourselves have thought death a sweet alternative, an alternative as it was to Elijah, to being a solitary voice, an alternative to the stress of of being under attack from those who were once our neighbors, an alternative to the loneliness and fear of being the odd person out, the person who has done what was right only to find that all who have stood with him or her have vanished away and every hand seems set against you, an alternative to feeling that perhaps, just perhaps, you are no better and perhaps no worse, or perhaps even worse, than those who have gone before you. No better even than those who are against you. Our journey through life takes us through some very dangerous country. Our our pilgrimage can, can lead us into some very desolate wilderness. And so Elijah prays that he might die. It is enough. Now, O Lord, Take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And then he lies down under the broom tree and falls asleep, a sleep that I know that each of you here today understands, the sleep of exhaustion, the sleep of stress so high, the energy to go on fighting so low that it just sweeps over you and normally is too soon gone. The new day comes too quickly. And in the night, something happens. An answer to his prayer. An angel comes and touches him, wakens him, tells him, Arise and eat. And there is food. A cake of bread upon a hot stone and drink. A jar of water set near to hand. And he eats. And he lies down again till, again, sometime later, the angel angel returns and touches him once more and says, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he rises, and he eats, and he drinks. 
And then the scriptures say he went 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the mountain of God, the place we call Mount Sinai. And there he comes to a cave and spends the night there. Now, there are some other interesting things that happen to Elijah while he's at the mountain of God, uh, Mount Sinai. At the end of this journey through the wilderness, he's granted a vision of God. He's given a message of hope for his own life and for the nation. And he is given a disciple, one who will keep him company, help him on his journey, and at last take his place as prophet over Israel when he grows old, the young man Elisha. But those are stories for another town, another time. But for now, I invite you to join me as we think of the words of the angel to Elijah, those words, arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. To survive on our journey, to have the strength to go through the barren places of life, those, those places where we're alone because of divorce or illness, or even death, We need to eat the food and to drink the drink that God has prepared for us. The food that he grants each one of us in the sacred stories of his holy word, in the newer tales told by people of faith who enter our lives from time to time. We need to cry out to God when we are in need, when we are in despair, and need then heed that tap that comes on our shoulder in the middle of the night, the the voice that whispers in our innermost ear. And tells us to believe, to trust, to rise up and take the bread and water that will be there for us to eat and to drink. And to eat and to drink again and then to go forth to complete our journey. Are you running on empty? Do you sometimes feel that you don't have the strength to travel on for another day, let alone 40? Then perhaps it's time to eat. The food is all around us, especially in this place, in the people who sit beside you, people who have faith, people who know the story, who know where God is to be found. God is here. God's angels hover around us. God is here in the truth that we proclaim, in the bread and wine that is shared at his table, in the light that enters through the windows, in the water that flows in the rivers outside these doors, in In the ordinary things, the daily miracles that so many take for granted. The rising and setting of the sun, the moon, the stars, the ever-changing mountains, the, the rhythms of the seasons. In the breath that comes in and out of our lungs each minute. In the crying of a baby, the laughter of a child, the care of a lover. God is here in Christ, the son of Joseph, whose parents indeed we do know. In Jesus, the carpenter with whom we are well familiar, God is the one who says, I am the bread of life. And again, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. God is in the one who said to his disciples and to us, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Solid food is available, my friends. Food that will sustain us on our spiritual journey. It's a great tragedy not to take it up and eat it. A tragedy that can so easily be avoided if a person will just take the time to look around and to think about what will truly satisfy There's a book entitled Abandonment to Divine Providence, written by uh, Jean-Pierre Cossard. He says, God speaks to every individual through what happens to them moment by moment. And then he adds to that. He says, the events of each moment are stamped with the will of God. We find all that is necessary in the present moment. We are bored with the small happenings around us, yet it is these trivialities as we consider them which would do marvels for us if only we did not despise them. So we think of bread, ordinary bread, 
Bread simply for the eating, rich and filling, something we all know quite well. Something that endures when other more exotic foods are not available or proves, as so much of the food that we eat in society does, to lead to death instead of life. Ordinary stuff, stuff we know, stuff that is so familiar to us that many of us fail to understand it. And we either try to make it out to be more than it is or despise it for being less than we think it ought to be, for being ordinary, familiar, common, rather than magical, powerful, immaculate, glorious, and wondrous beyond even the ability of a Cecil B. DeMille movie. But the ordinary is powerful. It is magical. It is immaculate and glorious and wondrous for those who have the eyes to see, those who seek God and are willing to get up and eat and drink what God has provided. God has provided us with food for the dirt journey. Take and eat that you may be strong in him and so reach the place he is calling you to. Amen. And now may the grace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, fill your hearts and minds and keep you in Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we have spoken and thought much about bread this morning. The bread that you give that is worked upon by human hands and the bread of heaven, the bread of life that you have given us in and through Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your love, for how you provide all things that we need. We thank you and we ask you, O oh God, to continue to feed us, to work on us, and to move us to feed others. Help us to live that recipe of good deeds before we give that recipe to others. Give us that needing strength of your spirit to work your words into that doughy recesses of our lives. Help us to let it rest a while in our hearts so that it can rise. Help us not to fear the oven of life so that it can bake through and through. And grant that in the baking, the world would be able to roll down its window and savor the aroma of freshly baked bread, your bread of life. Father, just as you graciously provide for our spiritual nourishment through the word revealed to us by your Son, Jesus Christ, so we, we bring our physical needs and the needs of others before you in the faith and confidence that you are willing to hear our prayers. We pray, O oh God, for the needs of our brothers and sisters throughout the world, those who are united with us at that one table of the Lord, and also for pastors and professional workers of His church, that they may continue to illuminate the Word by their words and examples. We pray for these and for others that are upon our hearts this day. Hear our prayers for those whom we name in our hearts at this time. We pray for the nations of this world, the peoples who make them up, especially for those who are in situations of war or want, and for all other intentions which you, O Lord, have placed upon our hearts. O God, be with us as we journey through life. Nourish us always with your bread of life until we reach the home which you have prepared for us from all eternity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. All other petitions we bring before you in the prayer you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Refuge of the weary, blessed Redeemer, whom we love. Fountain in life's desert, dreary, Savior from the world above. Often have your eyes offended, gaze upon the sinner's fall. Yet upon the cross extended, you have borne the pain of all. We are so happy that you've joined us here online this morning for our worship. We invite you to join us here again online next week or to join us in person as we worship together. We gather at 9 a.m. for a combined Sunday school and adult Bible class. Uh, We're currently working on some banners, so please join us at 9 o'clock. Then at 1015, we gather for worship. If you've enjoyed your time of worship with us here this morning online, Drop us a line, let us know. Uh, But more importantly, we'd love for you to share that good news with someone you care for. Invite them to worship alongside you. If this happens to be your first time to worship with us, please like us on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also find out more about us by going to our website at trinitylutheran.cc. And of course, we'd be more than happy to have you join us on a Sunday morning at 1015 here at Trinity Lutheran Church, 1512 Louise Street at Avenue Inn in Rosenberg, Texas, where we continue to be a people praising God, maturing in Christ, and reaching others through the Holy Spirit.